I am Johnny Musker and welcome to the Cheeky Livestream number 44. This is a place where we come together from all over the world and just have a laugh, just take it easy, just be positive and celebrate the great things of life, specifically on this Cheeky Livestream, otters. I fucking love otters. I don't know why, <laughs> I can't explain it, but I have a weird obsession with them. So I thought I'd talk a bit about otters and show you some weird pictures of otters because why not? Everyone loves watching animals for some strange reason what is with that why are humans obsessed with watching animals what is with that can anyone explain that to me so yeah i do i wonder how the health of this live stream is doing i think we're actually doing all right it looks like we've got three concurrent viewers which i am happy about i've got to be honest so that's good right otters you want to you want to see some shit with otters right i'm gonna i'm gonna show you because i've got a whole bunch of pictures now it turns out there's three main types of otters right so check this out i'll show you my screen so yeah otters of the world now the otters on the left are kind of the normal otters that you've probably seen before the reason i like these so much is because one of these is a pet in japan you can get it it's an endangered species don't ask me how you can get endangered species in japan but animal welfare out here is insane you just can so i started watching these otter videos on uh, youtube and they're fucking amazing man these things as pets are just the craziest things ever. They're definitely smarter than dogs. Honest to God, I swear down, otters are more intelligent than dogs. Whenever I say that to people, they find it kind of hard to believe, but you just have to trust me on this. You've got to watch these these otter channels on YouTube and just see how these crazy things operate because they are way, way smarter than dogs. They are on a whole other level that you've basically never seen before. And... Yeah, the ones in that picture, those are the those are the otters that I think you'll probably be familiar with. These bad boys here on the left. And they're super cute. Look, look at its little snout. It's basically a dog. It's basically a dog. And mate, they've got hands. That's the coolest thing about otters, right? They've got hands with fingers and shit, and they're kind of webbed. And they're just awesome. They can do crazy shit like juggle and I'll show you some videos later of my favorite otter channel. But then you got this motherfucker over in the top right. Now this beast, the giant river otter, this is, it's basically disgusting. I can't think of another word for it other than disgusting. It's one of the most hideous creatures in the universe. I think these get as big as people. They get fucking massive, bruv. And then you've got this bastard the sea otter now this guy he looks quite distinctive unlike the asian small clawed otter the river otter the african clawless otter and the european otter the sea otter looks a bit more chunky uh, he kind of looks like a like an anthropomorphic dessert um i haven't really looked into this one and i don't think you can get this shit as a pet this motherfucker the, the horrible demon giant river otter you definitely can't get this as a pet there is no fucking way and i think did i mention they can get as big as people so those are like the main types and first of all i reckon we should probably watch my favorite youtube channel of the moment and show you how cute these things can be. So my favorite YouTube channel, it comes up in my recommended, is called Kotsumet, K-O-T-S-U-M-E-T. And this channel, it follows these two otters called Hannah and Kotaro. They've got a million subscribers. And one of the things that's so good about this channel it's not just the personalities of the otters themselves, but it's the quality of the filming and the quality of the content. They use some really good quality cameras to film the otters. So you can really appreciate how majestic these things are, how beautiful their fur is, how just how curious and delightful their whiskers are and just how cute they are. So the camera works really good. Like a lot of Japanese stuff, privacy is an issue. So they never film the faces of the owners. So... It's almost like those old Tom and Jerry cartoons, right? You had the kind of woman in the kitchen, but they never showed her face. They kind of do the same. And for some reason, 
that makes this more appealing. I don't know why that is, but it, it just does. And also, I don't know how they've managed to endlessly recycle so many videos of just the same shit on, on, a, on a regular basis. But somehow they managed to make it kind of interesting um, nearly every day. And Kotaro, Kotaro is the male one and, and Hannah is the female one. And let's just watch a little bit of this because it's so fucking cute. Um, I have to skip this ad, mate. I need a fucking ad blocker, but ad blocker on a Mac is just kind of hard to come by. Right. So let's have a look. Mate, how long is this fucking ad? Jesus Christ. Two fucking ads. Mate, do you get these ads of these weird little video games that blatantly made in China with the most annoying sounds? Does anyone else get these ads? Right, let's have a look at this shit. So this is Hannah. And I already know this is Hannah. Oh, it's so cute. Because because Hannah uh, has like a little birthmark. Look how cute it is! Look at it! Come on now. Come on now. Are you not loving the... Look, it walks like a dog. And look how smart it is. It's going to fucking open the... Look, it opens the door on its own. Hear that noise? See, the owner goes fucking overboard. The owner blatantly has like a sick job because they can afford to make salmon popsicles and shit like that. And... Mate, when they, when they eat... When they eat, they make these mad noises. Sometimes they go, ah, and sometimes they're, eh, and when they eat, they, they kind of go, eh, but because, <laughs> because they're chewing, they end up going, yum, 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 yum. They literally go, yum, 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 when they eat. This is Hannah juggling. A bit cruel, right? Japanese animal welfare, not the best. Even though they're so, the thing is, they treat them so well. I think it'd be difficult to argue that these were mistreated in any way. I think they're totally happy, but... They do need a lot of water, these things. Anyways, the point is, I'm supposed to kind of get you into how cute these things are, right? That's the point of me showing you this before we look at the horrific giant river otter. Because, mate, I only thought there was one type of otter like this one. And then when I saw the giant river otter, I wanted to... I just thought, man, what has been seen cannot be unseen. There's no fucking way they can be the same species. They, like The giant river otter tarnishes the regular otter because they're just so horrific. And you see, kotaro has got this little dick sticking out. <laughs> it's, like, it's so fucking small. Like Otter dicks are tiny. That's also really amusing, I have to say. And uh, see Hannah there getting angry with the hose. So Hannah hates the hose. For some reason, she's got a war with the hose. And that's Kotaro. Kotaro's saying, Hannah... What? What's your problem with the hose, bitch? There's nothing wrong with it. So you look at Katara on the right. His whiskers are all mad. I love their whiskers. Can you imagine how much fun it would be having one of these things in your house? The music's a bit terrible, but... Look, look how smart they are. Look how smart they are. They're just amazing. So, Katara and Hannah, this is my favorite YouTube channel. I am watching this on a regular basis I, I super love it and I just wanted to share that with you look how cute look how cute Hannah is look at it with the rice ball known as an onigiri and sometimes they visit other otters so there's this whole otter community out there where different otter owners get together but when they do some of them try to shag Hannah and Hannah is celibate she just won't shag anyone she loves Kotaro but there's no romantic thing going on maybe because he's got a tiny cock as you just saw but i don't think it's that i just i don't know what hannah's problem is but when she goes out and meets other otter owners the, uh, the other otters owners is otters often try and shag hannah and she she might lead them on a little bit but then she'll snap at them or like sniff at them and stuff so those are my favorite otters that's how i got into otters basically if you're just joining us i'm johnny Masca and i'm showing you my bizarre love for otters uh, we got 10 concurrent viewers, more than enough. Let me just read a few of your comments, see what is going on. Michael Zell says, who all's here? Jade Thomas says, really Johnny, you bastard. You decided to fucking stream while I'm in the middle of fucking science class. You misspelled the word while. Uh, grammar Nazi here, but I just have to point that out. Wonkers, 
says, hi there. Wonka says, otters are cute with a little Japanese emoji. Richard in the house says, yo, hello, Richard. Thanks for sponsoring me again on Patreon, Richard. I really appreciate it. Speaking of which, look, we've done very well this month, haven't we, with the uh, donations. I'm I'm super, super happy about this. $1,130. I didn't think we were actually going to make it at one point. I was a bit paranoid because I got hit my target of $1,000 a month. If you want to keep getting these videos Monday to Friday, the more you donate, the more of me you will get. And we had a very generous donation from Bob from Wisconsin who donated $500 and since then, we had another donation. I'm going to read you out now. So MTS Skull 69, loving the name, says, Hey, man, this is, and I'm not going to say the full name. I'm not sure he wants me to say that. Uh, Mr. K from the YouTube chats. Anyway, I just, I just wanted to send some extra help as I've been working too much to try to do what you are doing. You are doing great work. Love you, man. Stay in touch, bro. Tips a hundred dollars. Thank you so much, MTS Skull sixty nine. I do, I do want to check though, um, MTS Skull sixty nine. He says he's been trying to do what I'm doing, so I guess he wants to do YouTube. So, mate, you got to give me your YouTube channel, and I will shout you out. I promise. I can't seem to find it um, on a Google search, but maybe if I search on YouTube we might be able to find it because mate, hundred dollars. I mean, that's like advertising. Definitely. I've got to shout you out for that. Yeah. I can't find you. I can't find you there. I can't find you there. So MTS skull, if you could let me know what your YouTube channel name is, I promise I will shout that out on the next cheeky live stream to give you a bit of promo because you certainly deserve it. My friends. <clears throat> okay. So where were we? Yes. If you donate, streamlabs.com forward slash Johnny Masca link in the description box below I'll go fucking mental bruv scream in Victoria's ear I'll, if Victoria's here I will scream in her ear and she loves that you must be a long time viewer to understand what I'm on about and that be that so let me just keep going through the comments bruv right so Jim Morrison's bathtub says on my way home from work which was at a breakfast joint I'll see you in 15 minutes if you're still here by the way today was fucking mental I did the craziest exercise so when I'm in peak form two hour run one hour run in a week gym like bench press dumbbells and boxing and gym bench press super heavy dumbbell super heavy boxing and and crunches and shit with a few other things kind of thrown in for good measure. But it's getting harder to do that at the moment because I took a bit of time off and I, I'm finding it hard to get back to fitness. So yesterday I tried to go for a run. It was supposed to be two hours and then gym. After seven minutes, my body just said, no, nah, nah, because I don't know, making this show and making money at the same time, you don't sleep a lot. You see these fucking bags under my eyes? So I've been sleeping from two to five hours in order to get this out. And so I think if you do a lot of training, and you and you don't sleep it just doesn't work sometimes i'm sure there's some fucking ultra marathon motherfucker lunatics out there who don't need to sleep and can exercise but as far as i go i, I need i need that rest so yesterday went for a run listen to my body i said at least you went out there looked in the mirror I said at least you went out there johnny at least you know you weren't up to it so to, today i was well up for some exercise so i did a two-hour run hard it was hard in the dark listening to house music i love doing that shit and then after that, I went to the gym, did 100 kilograms times 30, did some boxing. So I'm absolutely shagged, as we say in England. And so I've got the food on and you have to excuse me, but I've got to go and tend to my roast chicken. It's, it's roasting up live in the pan. I've got two tears in my shitty little Chinese oven with this massive fucking brick power converter. And I put some vegetables in. I don't know why I wasn't cooking vegetables with the chicken, getting better fucking economy out of the oven. But I started cooking vegetables in the oven. Lot of mercy. Lot of mercy. That shit makes me so excited. The smell of a food from an oven makes me nostalgic. It reminds me of being young. It's just love. It is mother's love. In England, everything's cooked in the oven. Even fucking fish fingers, mate, they cook them in an oven. Even chips, they cook them in an oven. And there's a certain smell about food in an oven, which is delish. So I've got that shit going. And you're going to have to excuse me because halfway through the chicken, I got to baste it. I got to baste it. Oh, fuck. I kind of got to check it. Can I just check? Can I check? Wait, wait. Fucking hell, bruv. Oh, shit. Mate, fucking hell. 
Right, we're nearly at half time with the chicken. So I'm going to put some music on and go and tend to that. And I will come back. Let me just get through the comments as well. We have 17 concurrent viewers. If you're just joining us, this is a cheeky live stream. Why is it called cheeky? Because it's fucking cheeky, mate. We talk about this, that and everything. Talk a bit of shit. But it's all about positive. It's all love. Honestly, do you know what this show is all about? It's about accepting other people's opinions. Yes, I have a strong opinion. If you watch the show... I've got a strong political opinion, don't we all nowadays? But really this show is about accepting other people's opinions because do you know what? I've kind of realized that is the main problem we've got. That's the main problem we've got. And when I started it, I might not have been able to articulate that, but I think that's what I was always aiming at. Case in point, I did a review of the Joe Rogan podcast with Jordan B. Peterson and I knew when I did it, I was going to get a little bit of pushback from people who love Jordan B. Peterson. And I kind of realized, you know, that some of the negative comments I got from the Jordan B. Peterson podcast, which I didn't really like that much, um, but I still got something out of it. And I, I said, I love Jordan B. Peterson, got nothing against him. Some of the negative comments I got, they're not a million miles away from some of the comments I might get from leftists when they stumble across my content that's kind of anti-radical leftism and whatnot. And it just goes to show you whether you're on the left or whether you're on the right or whether you like Trevor Noah or, or whether you like Jordan B. Peterson, people find it really upsetting when you criticize something they love. They cannot tolerate someone with a different opinion, regardless of where you are on the political spectrum. And of course, if you say you don't like something that I love, it's a bit disappointing. But for me, I'm definitely not going to get angry with you and I'm not going to be resentful because life's too short and life is beautiful and there's just no time for that. So really, I just think what, what the Cheeky live stream is about is being tolerant with other people's opinions as long as people aren't being nasty. And that's the other thing. This show is just all about showing love. It's about just hanging out and, and having a chat and having a laugh sometimes life gets a bit serious and that's what I want it to be about and underneath that it's about tolerating other people's opinions as long as they're you know respectful and, and put forward in a, in a kind of like good natured way and whatnot so that's really what this show is all about my friends the cheeky live stream we can chat about anything but it's usually just trivial shit like otters we will get back to the otters all right let me go through the comments I'll get back to my oven bruv Jay Thomas says can't even move my phone because how shitty the internet is Johnny so I can barely watch the stream all right, mate. Well, do your best. Do your best, son. Yeah, Jim, I'll see you in 15 minutes. Highly Unlikely says, hell yeah. Richard says, yo. Lone Grow says, just here. Corey says, Johnny, we need you to deep dive Pelosi's portfolio. See, I don't really understand how this works, but I know Pelosi is about 80 fucking years old and she's running again for the house and... It may come on now. When you're in politics for that long, when everyone's hating on you and shit, there's only two reasons you're in that. Number one is from, it's basically only one, it's for money. But it might be money that you're making, but it's also money other people have made off you and then you owe them favors. There's no other reason to be in power that long. It's fucking ridiculous. We need term limits on whatever position the Pelosi's and Skeletors of this world are occupying. Okay, we're getting political now. I mean, you tell me, Corey, what do you know about Pelosi? Tell me, tell me what, what I should know. I, I see a lot of people on Twitter like caning Pelosi, but not just, oh, Susan Middleton just subscribed. Hello, Susan. Susan! <laughs> mate, me and my mate, we've got an obsession with tits, should I say this? I, I mean, I really, look, I just like, some people like tall women, short women. I have an obsession with breasts. I just can't, it's just the truth. So me and, you know when you meet someone who has the same level of obsession about a certain kind of woman as you and you become good mates quite quickly? Good mate of mine, uh, Vega. Um, who I met playing Halo like 10 years ago. We both are obsessed with breasts. And we Susan Sarandon has amazing breasts. She's like 60 years old or in her 60s, but she has amazing tits. And so any single time we say the name Susan, <laughs> me and my mate Vega, we're just like, Susan! Because we love her so much. So anyways, um, I've just said that because the person who subscribed is called Susan and it made me think of Susan Sarandon who has amazing tits. Now I've just told you way too much stuff, but hey, just being honest. Highly Unlikely says, rent is paid. Yay. If you donate, it's going to go towards next month's rent. That would be amazing. Uh, Rolling Thunder says, what's up, Johnny? What's up, Rolling Thunder? Richard says, I'm making Spanish chicken. Uh, Reaper chili sauce added for kicking the teeth. Wicked, bruv. How's it going in Wales? Highly, I hear the ping in the oven. Hear the ping in the oven. What's that called when the dog or the animal knows the kind of sound on the food bowl? There's some psychological term for that. Whatever that is, it's happening to me right now. 
Rolling Thunder says, what are you and Joe Rogan going to do a show together? Be Sweet of Jordan Peterson was also there. Uh, Christian Modernell just subscribed. Wicked. We're getting loads of subscribers. We'll talk about this in a minute because I started getting loads of subscribers after a video I did on uh, Kid Rock with his Let's Go Brandon chorus song, We Are The People. Be interesting to talk about what goes viral and what doesn't and shadow banning and stuff and, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so yeah, I'd love to do a, a podcast with Joe Rogan. I would just be, your opinion of me would completely change because I would go in there honest as fuck. That guy respects honesty. And if you go in there even like 1% bullshitting, he'll fucking, he'll kill you, bro. You see, even Jordan B. Peterson, he gave him a rough ride. I was disappointed with that podcast. I thought they were going to get together, talk about Ovid K., Arona K, Iris Vey and shatter that narrative and put that to bed and have Jordan, you know, really chip in with that and what's going on in Canada with the blockade and Trudeau and all this government overreach. And, you know, he hates socialism and communism and he'd chip in with that. He does none of that. I, I felt it was such a missed opportunity. I honestly think, as I said on the podcast yesterday, that Rogan was just pissed with Jordan because Jordan was, was saying shit against climate change and Joe Rogan feels strongly about that and it kind of got off on the wrong foot. I think that's simply what it was. For me, I'm really noticing about how the first domino in the chain affects everything else. Actually, it's always the same every time with dominoes. But it's the first move impacts the whole, the rest of the game, the rest of the energy, right? This year, I started off on a positive vibe, 2022, and things have been good, you know? And I, I put the same philosophy into everything. When I meet someone, I'm going to be respectful to them. I'm going to be nice to them. I'm going to try to, you know just entertain not even like that you know when you meet someone and you, maybe you're a bit prejudiced you don't like the look of them or something you don't give them time I thought fuck that this year I'm gonna I'm gonna treat everyone equally and I'm gonna I'm gonna just be positive with everyone and with that kind of mentality you get so much more back when you're being less cynical and in the same way I think with that podcast they, they they didn't do that at all. They didn't try to get off on the right foot. They didn't go off positive. They went off in a kind of battle and that set the tone and mood for the whole thing. Oh, I feel that the world needed that podcast. I feel like the world, I'm getting really excited now. I felt like the world needed Jordan B. Peterson right now to come back in the culture war. And it just, it didn't. Anyways, any, anyways, anyways. Right, let me get through. My chicken's pinging, right? So I've got to roll, roll, roll over there. Um, Jason Lee says, can you share about the stuff in your room? Are you, are you a new subscriber, Jason Lee? People ask me this quite a lot and I'm happy to repeat it over and over again. I will do it. Is there anything specifically you want to ask me about? Harley Unlikely says, roast chicken, you need stuff. Uh, mate, I need a stuffing. Projecting there, darling. I know you, uh, mate. Let's let's move on from that comment. Harley Unlikely says, let's ruin the, I, I would like a bit of stuffing though in my chicken. I can't make stuff in because I'm shit at cooking and and it's got carbs in. I can't really do that. But, mate, fucking hell. Sausage and Christmas stuffing, right? Only on Christmas. Sausage and, what is it, chestnut? Oh, fuck, that's delicious. Sage and onion. Parsley and thyme I liked as a kid. Mate, my fucking family Christmas has a smorgasbord, a medley of stuffing. We got parsley and thyme like in the balls. We got... Uh, sage and onion in the fucking in a rack of shit in a tray and then we got the, the sausage and onion right up that fucking turkey oh man it's delicious right we're gonna get to giant otters after i base my chicken um okay i can't get through okay i'm gonna put on a song i put on a quick song my latest single it's called pop star you can stream it now on spotify um i'm gonna come back i'll be back in like one second bruv um yeah so so let me just uh let I'll be back, right? I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll get the song up, right? I'll leave you with some with some music. Shall I? Okay, so I'll leave you with the song. I'll be back in like two minutes. I've got to tend to my chicken, bruv. I've got to tend to my chicken, bruv. My latest single. See if you can understand the lyrics. <laughs> I do. Let me bury this 
done with that we're done with that we're done with that um hope you like the tune and stuff right i fucking tended to my chicken did you see that i gave you a little cheeky preview of the chicken of the cheek i gave you a cheeky preview of the cheeky chicken on the cheeky live stream i hope you I hope you like that um you can stream that song now it's out on spotify the acapella is kind of is is cool like the acapella where you just hear my voice and stuff Sounds fucking nuts. It's a shame I can't sing, because if I could, I'd be an absolute savage. But because I can't sing, it kind of made me have to work with what I've got, and it just turned into this, weird, this monotone kind of punk draw. But this is uh, some of the acapella. If you want to hear it, it's really bizarre. Yes, I do. Let me bury this once and for all. She was a hop star. Zombies on the train, staring at the floor. Looking through their hands, I'm looking out the door. I'm off the grid, you're in the matrix. All this fake shit makes me want to break shit. I licked her face, I'm a dirty boy. Pulled her mask down, I sat her ass down. In the cab, passed out. Happy Valentine's, I should have never asked your ass out. It don't matter. I would love to tell you the full story of that song. It's about a girl and it's kind of mad because I wrote that song when I hadn't seen her for ages and I thought, mate, this is so fucked up. We didn't kind of progress a bit more. And then I actually did end up kind of kind of meeting her quite a few times after I made that song. And then it kind of now I want to make a sequel to that because there's so much stuff I didn't know before and in the end it didn't really work out. But there's a lot in that song. There's a lot in that. So, okay, I'm going to talk about otters because Highly Unlikely really wants me to talk about it. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about the otters. So you've seen the nice otter, the kind otter. Now let me show you the evil otter, right? So this... It's all in this meme, right? It's all in this meme. So here's a meme, right? It says, one of these is not like the otter. Nice play on words. So we've got the North American River Otter. That's basically the one I showed you on um, that channel, Kotara and Hannah. Then we've got the Southern Sea Otter, which remains a mystery. And look how cute it looks on the meme. This this mother is this one. See, but I'm not sure. And it is really cute, but it kind of, I don't really trust it. Look at the beady eye. Don't really trust it. I don't really trust it. And then we've got the giant river otter, this horrible bloodthirsty beast. Um, yes, Melanie, I did say I'm a dirty boy. <laughs> I did, I did, I did. Just being honest, just being honest. Mate, I'd love to talk about... Oh, no, nah, no, nah, we can't talk about that. 
Can't talk about I Man, there's so much I wish I could talk about on this show. So look, the point is, I discovered that there is a horrible mutation of the nice otter that looks like this. I don't know which is the true otter, but these things can get, I don't know, seven feet or something. Should we have a look at how horrific the giant river otter is? It is another level. So I thought I'll kind of wean you onto it with the baby picture. So even the baby, I mean, it looks kind of cute, but, but it's still... It's still kind of ugly, right? You can see there's something wrong with the mouth. It looks a bit vampiric. Looks like it wants to do something. It, it looks like it's going to grow up to be a beast. Now, let's let's see how hot... Like, these are so fucked up looking. It looks fake. <laughs> it looks like some kind of B-movie prop or something. It doesn't look real. Check this out. Richard says, otters are savage. The bigger they are, the nastier. That's the thing. They are, that's another reason I like them is because they're savage. They're brutal. I wonder how good an otter would be at getting rid of an intruder. I think they should be in packs to get the full kind of like leverage if you're going to exploit your otters and, and turn them into attack otters. But I do wonder what they'd be like as guards, how they'd measure up to a dog. So look, this is what it looks like. Look, it doesn't look real. It's all, look, okay, this eye is looking that way and this one's fucking now. What do you call that when the eyes are independent like a chameleon or some kind of reptile? That shit is not attractive but let's keep going there's more oh mate what is wrong with its eyes man its eyes look all kind of sick it looks like it's got some kind of infection in its eye and they're always goggle-eyed like one's looking this way and this one's looking this way a little bit like the scene in goodfellas where they're talking about that painting with the dogs except there's fucking otters in it and it just looks sore and in pain and it's always feasting on something with blood pouring everywhere. Right, we need to zoom in on this shit. Right, now this pretty much shows you everything you need to know about the giant river otter. Would you say that's a beautiful looking otter? Because I certainly would not. I would not. There's so much wrong with it. There's so much wrong with it. Look at its hands. It look like, I don't know, like tarantulas or something. Just every part of it. Oh, mate, look at, its, look at its jaws and stuff. So I really wouldn't want to mess with one of these things. Look at that, bruv. It looks mad. It looks insane. It looks bonkers, crackers, nutty, bruv. What, it looks deranged. Something is wrong with it. I mean, it looks like a genuine monster. It looks like a monster. Mom, a monster's real. Well, actually, yes. And they're called otters. Giant river otters, to be specific. Look at that, mate. Imagine having that in your fucking house. Or maybe you could kind of um, tame it and become like a giant river otter whisperer and it could be quite cool. See, even when it's not looking like some kind of horrific killer, it still looks pretty ugly, wouldn't you say? Weird looking mouth. So there you go. Look, and in, a, in a filthy pool, filthy animal in a, <laughs> in a filthy pond. But yeah, Richard's right. Otters are savage. Even the kind of regular cute ones, which we looked at earlier, Kotara and Hannah, you can see them in the wild attacking shit. I saw them attacking a turtle and they flipped it. Like a big snapping turtle, dangerous one. I told you they're smart. Didn't get bitten once. Flipped it over, ripped out its intestines and was feasting. So I just think otters are cute, cool, super intelligent. And because they're kind of badass, they'll fuck you up. It makes them even better. So there you go. Otters. I wanted to talk a little bit about otters. I cannot stop watching that YouTube channel, Kotsumet, of Kotara and Hannah. I love those things. And you know what? There's an otter cafe in, in Japan, but I find that shit a bit cruel. Kotara and Hannah get treated so well by the owners, but when I look at the Instagram videos of the otters in the otter cafe, I kind of, I just feel a bit sorry for them. And they're being exploited for money. So I, I don't feel right going there. I kind of want to because I love otters so much. At least it could be an investigation to see if they're actually happy or, or content, but I'm not sure they are. If you're just joining us, I'm Johnny Masker, and this is a cheeky live stream number 44 where we are respectful of each other's opinions and we are excellent to one another and we chat about random shit, whatever you like, mate. If you donate, streamlabs.com forward slash Johnny Masker, you'll get a nice animation there. I'll be well happy. We've smashed the target by $130. Four days to go. Can we increase it still further? And we are chatting about otters and stuff just because I think they're such cool animals. Really, really love them. What else? 
are we going to talk about today? I kind of, man, this book I read, Neuromancer, it's fucking, it stayed with me. I did a review last Cheeky live stream. That was the point of the last Cheeky live stream. But I felt like I should have done a proper review of it. I almost want to drop a review on my main Johnny Masker show. Would that be all right with you? Or would you miss the politics? So I just, man, the book affected me quite a lot. It affected my vision for relationships. And this is very much self-imposed, but the author William Gibson kind of wove the tapestry onto which I could kind of thread or through which I could thread my own kind of creations and and vision in regards to relationships. I just love the relationship in this book. I love the way it's, it's like the old liberal me, nihilistic sex, just kind of meet someone random. There's not a lot of uh, I love yous or lovey dovey clingy shit. It's just fuck occasionally and hang out the rest. But that's why the relationship's so interesting because you want the I love you. You want them to hold hands, but they never do. And it's kind of like going back to animals and stuff. No, not going that into that territory, but with animals, you know how you wonder if they love you and stuff? And does my cat really love me? If you Google does my cat, I think that's the main thing that comes up. And people always wonder like, do they really love me? There's a fascination with that. And it's in this book, you're wondering, do they really love each other? And it stayed with me. And I had a dream about the book and I was in Neuromancer and in the Matrix with all this kind of translucent, sh translucent sheets of data and rainbow colors and pink pyramids and stuff. And I was kind of in the relationship as well. And it was just an awesome dream. So this book has left a real impression on me. And I didn't realize how difficult it was until I started listening to other reviews. And there's actually not that many other reviews of the book. So... I kind of want to review it again. It really, really stayed with me. Do you know what I'm reading now? The reason I'm reading all these paper books is because I don't take my phone out with me when I go outside anymore. And even if I do, I don't want to look at my phone and read a book because it's a window into addiction. So my dad, who used to work in the publishing industry before he retired, obviously loves books. And he tried to get me to read books all of his life. And he got me these like fucking 15 years ago. Or even like some of them 20 years ago. Moby Dick and shit up there. His, one of his favorites. And now I've, I've realized, wow, I don't need to buy any books because I've got all these books already. I just go through them all. My dad's a beast, so he recommends me good shit. I'm reading Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. So different from Neuromancer. Neuromancer, they just drop in all this random uh, neologisms, old words with new meanings. And you don't know what it means. They assume you know what it means, even though they know you don't know what it means but you kind of pick it up later in the book but that's part of the book don't question technology just go with it i think that's the underlying metaphor but with this they explain it really well and the difference is so much i guess the author of neuromancer is californian i've kind of listened to the audio book but this guy's proper british this is it's so british that's what I love about it. I do love British culture. Come full circle. Used to love it. Then stop. When I was more liberal, I, I hated a lot of England, right? Because that's a left-wing thing to do. I kind of hate my own country and fuck it all. I've come full circle and I quite like it now. And if you want to get a nice taste of Britain, British London, this book is it. Talks about um, uh, Hyde Park and uh, various places in London you might be familiar with if you've been on holiday there talks about eating some supper and they all go blind in this book apart from the main character and a few others and he's looking for some food and I want to read you this because it's the most British thing ever but it's you know British people overthink everything and they're, they're too polite there's one scene where he he doesn't want to break into a shop to take anything even though everyone's blind and it's the end of the world and it's the literal Armageddon apocalypse he still doesn't want to steal anything and he leaves a bit of money behind the exact the amount he thought would be sufficient maybe a bit more it's the most British shit ever kind of overthinking about things being overly polite and stuff so if I can find it I am going to read that is that that bit was really cool for me um yeah, I think I kind of read this in school, but I don't I don't really remember much at all, to be honest. Um, the disappointing thing in this book is all these meteors come from space and they blind everyone. And then everyone's on the same level as these carnivorous plants who before they were already there, but nobody cared. But now the plants are blind. They're obviously blind. The people are blind. The plants are adapted to not seeing. Everyone's fucked. Um, but I was disappointed in the book to learn 
that the plants were kind of engineered by Russia. So this is obviously written around the times of the Cold War and the oil from the plants is better than fish oil and they want to sell it to this company and it's it's all about these genetically modified plants. But I thought they were from space. For me, if it's from space, it's actually a little bit cooler. But apparently Russia fucking did it. Russia built these evil carnivorous plants that will whack you uh, if you get too close. Right, let's see if we can find... Um, I've got to find this bit where he takes the food. He has like a sandwich. He sits down and eats a sandwich. Oh, I think I think I might have found it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Okay, okay, okay. This is quite funny. I'm going to read this in like the most British voice possible. So, Okay, so a taxi after mounting the pavement had finished up with its radiator buried in a pile of delicatessen. That made it seem different from my from doing my own breaking in. I climbed past the taxi and collected the makings of a good meal. But even then, something of the old standard still clung. I conscientiously left a fair price for what I had taken lying on the counter. And then he eats it. And he has a fucking cigarette. And in the, all these old books, everyone smokes. They smoke in Neuromancer. So they smoke in this. And I, I do like that. So I'm reading Day of the Triffids. I do like the style. He explains things very well. It's very British. And he's he draws out the tension really well. You know what's going on, but the character doesn't really know what's going on. And he keeps drawing it out and drawing it out. So you want to get into the book and say, hey, man, fucking wake up. But it's kind of semi-comedic because it's almost so ridiculous that he doesn't know what's going on when he should. So Day of the Triffids is uh, pretty good stuff, man. Starting to read that now. People keep telling me to read Snow Crash and stuff. Uh, everyone's saying that's really shit hot. Even my dad mentioned that. A lot of you people mentioned it in the comments. Victoria, if someone donates, I'm going to... I'm gonna, do your favorite thing while I scream in your ear. If somebody donates, Victoria, get ready. Turn up the volume. Get ready. Coming in for an oral massacre. All right, see if I can get through some of the comments, see what you beautiful people are saying. My, my chicken is roasting in the pan. Really, it would be sick if I, if I had another camera hooked up to this, like with some long ass cable and I'll fucking wear a body cam, take you into my shitty excuse for a kitchen and we'll fucking eat together. That would be really something. So 26 concurrent viewers. Are there any new Massacre Mates here? You were the Massacre Friends, but I think it's now Massacre Mates TM. Any new Massacre Mates here? Oh, so this is what I wanted to say. So I did a video on uh, Kid Rock's new song, which had a chorus of Let's Go Brandon and it's called We The People. I only got 10,000 views in 24 hours. It, I do not understand how the algorithm works. Um, I'd, I'd say eight out of 10 people I've asked to search me on YouTube, my name doesn't autofill. That's impossible because I had a song 10 years ago with 9 million views and it always autofills. So I think unless you're logged in and have the right age settings, I'm, I don't come up in searches. But that said, I got to 10,000 people. I didn't do a premiere or premiere, as you'd say in America, of the video, which I usually do where we can watch it live and talk. I just dropped it. Instantly, it was getting hits, and it got 10,000 views in the space of 24 hours. I don't, I just do not understand how the fucking algorithm works. But I think there's a few more massacre mates coming in. Um, a guy called Johnny sent me a message and said he feels we got the same kind of viewpoints. And uh, we had we had a good chat and stuff. And this is what it's all about. It's kind of reaching out, connecting with people. The thing is, like, my stuff is so political. I don't want to put people off who are on the other side. I don't want to go into this. I don't want to go into this tribal shit. But I can only be myself, right, and say my opinion. But it is what it is. Anyways, Kid Rock video, 11,000 views. Pretty proud of that. Pretty proud of that. Pretty proud of that. And I think most of the people who watch the video are... Republicans and very much against um, Brandon. So this was a funny comment from Chill Us Turtle about my Jordan B. Peterson episode. He said, Jordan looks like an ex-magician who accidentally chopped one of his performers in half and still hasn't gotten over it. <laughs> I do like reading the comments. The thing, one day, if and when I, this channel does blow up and it gets like hundreds of thousands or whatever, it's going to be so fucking hard to read the comments. But then it will just be a subscriber thing. So people who are subscribed, then I can kind of 
the people who really you know interested in the channel i can i can give you more time but right now i try to give my time to to everyone because man life is short and to have the the blessing of being able to kind of communicate with all these interesting people these characters you can't you can't fuck with that you can't fuck with that it's, it's amazing it's incredible it's it's amazing so other things on my list of stuff i've got to go pretty soon other things to talk about not nothing really i've got something the things on my list is beat sync which is automatic djing i might save that for next time because that go that bleeds into some existential thing about meaning and being in the moment and creativity and all that kind of stuff so i might save that for another night other stuff on my list is uh the no dislikes on youtube and the the interesting thing about that is youtube did that in my opinion to control the narrative more but now they can't control the narrative with the genuine really shitty channels of just horrible people doing horrible stuff you can't see their thumbs down so but that is secondary to making joe brandon look like the most popular present ever the other thing i wanted to talk about was spaces on twitter so what was that thing called where you could all have a audio conversation online that was really big for about five minutes and that's kind of gone away you, there's no video it's all just audio and you kind of come in and come out they basically emulated that on twitter they've stole that and put that into twitter and it's quite interesting you can just now eavesdrop on conversations about anything from fucking climate change to like fucking video games or whatever you like nfts and you just you sit there and listening to people and you can come into the conversation if they allow you and it's actually a really good system and now it's kind of popping up automatically on my twitter feed and the other day, there was something about the, the Canadian trucker blockade. I went in, you had the leading minds like Viva Lafray, that lawyer guy who's now like serious activist. Everyone talking about the blockade in real time. Do you know what? <clears throat> as much as the technology is, is, is evil because the people, the technology is not evil, but the people controlling it are evil. And I think people on the right and left can agree. What it lets you do is fucking incredible. I can jump into a conversation with the world's leading minds about any issue that I want just incredible and not only that going on from that instagram yesterday i've got an event coming up i've got a few chicks i'm you know chasing and whatnot and i can get on my phone it's like blah 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 blah, blah. in in 30 minutes of like bombing my phone i can get all these random people to come to my event people i know people i've never met before people i kind of know i can kind of chat with chicks and stuff and a you can make money from it you can communicate you can get info it's it's just incredible and i just I'm so disappointed that the people who control that, they're exploiting it um, for their own gain and for political reasons. It's such a shame. But for that reason, I think there's a massive hole in the market for more honest, independent social media. And I think you're starting to see that slowly, but surely with things like Getter and, and whatnot, rivals to Twitter and stuff like that. So I, I kind of want to talk about that, but I guess I already just talked about it. Um, there was some weird shit on Twitter spaces so there was uh, NFTs. It was ultimate cringe. You know how it's just NFT bros or crypto bros. They don't really know anything about it, but they just it's just a substitute for personality. They feel they're part of a tribe and they know the lingo, but then they don't actually really know anything about it. The NFT spaces on Twitter was just talking about Winnie the Pooh on LSD and going to Disneyland on LSD. That's the kind of general level of intelligence the average NFT bro seems to have, the people that want you to think they're taking it seriously but they actually don't really know what's going on um i went into an arsenal space on twitter with these kind of nigerians talking about arsenal they're like well serious about it that was fucking cool so twitter spaces actually kind of recommend it it's actually pretty fun so let me go into your comments before i go and enjoy my chicken i can't wait to eat that shit i'm fucking starving brother I tell you okay let's see what's going on right lots of fun in the comments I can't, I simply can't. Bahamian Libertarian says, is this what happens when an otter and beaver engage in coitus? Right, they make a fucking, a horrible otter, the giant river otter. It's weird because you sometimes get two ugly people who make a beautiful kid, but maybe those two beautiful otters make a fucking horrible otter. It could, it could be the case. It could be the case. Okay. Bronkers chips in with kind of cute. Giant river otters are okay. That's pretty kind to the giant river otter. It's pretty kind. It's pretty fucking kind, mate. PH Joy says, good morning, Massacre friends. Hello, PH Joy. I'm rebranding it as Massacre Mates. Can we call it Massacre Mates? 
Richard says we can add otters to the Godzilla Mothra flying Rottweiler defense system. Fuck yeah. Okay, now that we have found the use for giant river otters, as correctly pointed out by Richard. We're going to put them in the moat and it will be the last line of defense during the apocalypse. Melanie Hyder says, I'm so glad I'm not the only one binging out on otter vids. I've been watching Atty the otter. The cuteness is off the scales, right? Atty. See, Atty, right? I'm loyal. See, this is where it gets tribal, right? It's like, how dare you not like what I like? See, I like Kotaro and Hannah. You like Atty? How dare you like another otter? How I feel offended. I feel offended. I want to attack you personally. Atty, for me, is like the discount, Hannah. Am I missing out? I think I watched one episode with Atty and... That shit's not going to put you off getting an otter. I don't know what will. He had an uh, infrared camera and filmed what otters did sleeping in the same room. He slept on the floor in the futon. And basically the otter for about an hour was like crawling all over his arm. And it would then suddenly in the middle of the night, it would just go Eah! just relentlessly all over the fucking place. It's kind of cute to see on a video, but I did see that on the Atty channel. Not sure if you saw that one. But Atty meets with my favorite otters, right? They meet up. Atty meets up with Kotara and Hannah. Melanie, have you seen Kotara and Hannah? I love those. I love. There's going to be a national day of mourning when those otters pass away. They're three years old. I hear they live until 10 or 12, but I fucking love those otters. PH Joy says, I saw a baby otter in the wild on a remote beach. We steered clear because we knew the mum would be nearby and unforgiving. Very respectful, PH Joy, as usual. Bahamian Libertarian says, as long as these otters don't get sucked up in a sharknado, I'm cool with them. Mate, the, the giant river otter will just eat the sharknado. Slub says cats are selfish fucks, zero loyalty. See, that's why me and cats don't really gel. That's why I want an otter. Melanie Hyder says, I would love to hear about the book. I think it's cool to discuss books that have had an impact on us. Okay, the great comment. All right, I'll review Neuromancer on a Johnny Massacre show. I think I'll do that. PH Joyce says, yay, paper books. Johnny, have you read The Old Man and the Sea by Hemingway Epic Read? I haven't. I think my mate read that and he said it was amazing. What's the general story of that? Is anyone else watching otters? Is it just me? Because this is some Japanese shit. I think the leading otter dudes are in Japan, but I think it's hard to get those things in the States. Are there any States in America where you can get an otter? There's got to be a few. Okay. Johnny's Book Club, Law says Melanie Hyder. Yes, yes. Massacre Book Club. Massacre Books. Book Massacre? I never know whether to put Massacre before or after the concrete noun. Sometimes one sounds better than the other and vice versa. Emo says, halfway through the Peterson interview currently, so we'll finish that soon. And after your review, Johnny, I was extra intrigued to get on it. Victoria Rockwell says, the eyes, you kill me. Mate, fucking cluck in for that donation. Fund the massacre, people. Streamlabs.com forward slash Johnny Massacre. I'll go mucking fentanyl if, you, if I get a sexy little donation tonight. Ellie and Cat says, oh, I'm at work, can't talk. Ellie and Cat is a beast. Over on my Telegram, Ellie and Cat providing mad amounts of information. Thank you so much. Michael says, Zell says, Snow Crusher was cool. PH Joy says, I'd love to see your kitchen. It's a, it, it barely qualifies as a kitchen. I like it because it's so ghetto. Okay. All right, people talking about the weather and shit. Freezing where you lot are, apparently. Lone Wolf 36 says, hope everyone's cashing out stocks and prepping. Market crash is predicted. Uh, I'm, I'm with him on that. I'm with him on that. I'm with him on that. But the thing is, as long as you don't sell it, you don't lose anything. So you could, it could crash. Then you could buy the dip and you could just chill and wait for it to return. But who knows how long you're going to have to wait when that crash comes. I'm amazed we haven't crashed already, bruv. When two ugly people make a pretty one, the bird wasn't faithful. <laughs> Great comment, Richard. Is that the case? That, so that's what it is. So David Beckham, his dad's not his real dad. Who else has like kind of minging parents and is really attractive? Is it it's some, it's some woman? Who, who was that? Oh, it's a, it's a fucking, that, that wankers, <laughs> Prince Harry's bird, that, that woke, What's her fucking... I don't, I don't care. What, but yeah, she, her parents are kind of fucked up and she's, she's hot. She's definitely hot. She's definitely hot. 
Pippa, right? Pippa, Kate Middleton's sister. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pippa, she's got a well nice ass. She doesn't get many column inches. It's all that other attention seeking egomaniac, uh, Harry's bud. Harry's bird. Mate, she fucking destroyed Harry. That was her little ploy. I'm going to break this. I'm going to break the prince. I'm going to break royalty. Get him under my stiletto. She fucking hurt him bad. Harry is just... I feel I feel sympathy for Harry. I've been there. Even the toughest men can get broken down by a certain kind of woman. And that actually can be the best experience you have as long as you escape alive. I know too much now. My favorite otter, according to Slavs, is Sandra Otterson. Google her. Is this going to be boob related? Sandra Otterson. This must be a porn star, right? This isn't a real otter. Sandra Otterson. Oh. Whoa. Fuck, man. Lot of mercy, Sandra. I love you. I love you, so mate. BBC porn. Okay, she's a porn star. Sandra, mate. That's my kind of otter. Fucking wicked, bruv. This is otterception going on here. Okay. So everyone's talking about the weather. See, this is I give away the, the British atmosphere because we love talking about weather. In this book, Day of the Trippers, he does talk about weather quite a lot. We do like that. We do like that. Good weather in Japanese is itenki desu. It is good weather. P.H. Joyce says, The Old Man of the Sea was originally published in a paper. It's all about a solo fishing trip. I, who are, okay. Old Man in the Sea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that shit up. Thank you so much, Massacre mates. Melanie Hyder says, Johnny Massacre. Yes, I did watch Kotaro, Hannah and Atty Vid. Hey, Johnny. Could this be a German thing? <laughs> so maybe, maybe because me and Melanie are German. I'm half German. We have some love of otters in our DNA. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Okay. Right, sweet. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it. I can I check my fucking chicken, bruv? Can I check my chicken? I'll give you the rest of the song because it didn't finish. I need to check the chicken. I've got to see what's happening. If you'll excuse me for one minute. <laughs> So, yeah, mate, the, the chicken's still roasting in the fucking saucepan. I'm getting so randy for this chicken. So now is your chance. You can you can drop any comment you like. Um, just try to be nice and kind. I think, I think everyone can do that. I hope. And, uh, yeah, I'll read out any good ones. I've got this other shit on my desk. I've got Traveller Japan. What? I didn't buy this. Someone left this in my apartment there's all kinds of random shit in here there's mate there's this japanese island with a massive tree apparently it's like fucking it's called jomon sugi it's it's insanely old this fucking tree jomon sugi it's the jomon sugi let's fucking let's look this shit up let's look up the jomon sugi see i tell you what i'm self-diagnosed with attention deficit disorder i obviously have it because you can see my attention is just going around all the time the good thing about that is it's so good for a cheeky live stream because you can just fucking talk about anything bruv you can talk about fucking anything bruv right so let's see joe monsugi let's have a look at the joe monsugi it's some ancient tree on this this random island miles away in japan Right, Jomon Sugi is a large cryptomeria tree that related to Bitcoin. Located on Yakushima, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Japan, it is the oldest and largest among old growth cryptomeria trees on the island and is estimated to be between 2170 and 7200 years old. Other estimates of the tree's age include at least 5,000 years, more than 6,000 years, and up to 7,000 years old. 
the Joe Monsugi. The thing is, there's no one standing next to it, so you can't really get an impression of the scale, but it's definitely fucking massive. And it looks like, look at it, like maybe 7,000 years old. Look at this old mystical beast. It's almost like it's got a face on there. I mean, this is, if you're going to cast an Ent, you want to fucking interview this tree for Lord of the Rings. Because you know they're going to milk another sequel out of that at some point. Silmarillion, another book by Tolkien, Unfinished. Will they make a movie from that? They've got to. And they can take liberties with that because it wasn't properly fleshed out. Anyways, Joe Monsugi. Um, I've got this little book of Japanese shit. I think I might always keep a little book handy. Because why the fuck not? And it's always it's always good crack. It's always good fun. Maybe there's quite a lot of good shit in this book. I mean, look, Hokkaido, north of Japan, really cold place. Look, they got fucking squirrels. I got a mate up in Hokkaido who told me the titty bar up there is fucking mad. It's like Amsterdam. Women with their titties out on the second floor and shit, just l l kind of leering over the street looking for a customer. All kinds of weird sexual bars and stuff. I mean, what more could you want? What more could you want? Yeah, I don't think I've ever been to a strip club in my whole life. I went on a date on the weekend and the girl wanted to go to a strip club and I said, fuck, this is my kind of date. But it was closed and it was the most ghetto looking strip club ever. But I kind of wanted to go in there. Did karaoke instead. Karaoke is fucking, it's fucking awesome. See, I could tell you so much shit just from this book. I'm going to have a little book handy the whole time. Look, we got Northwest Tokyo, Idabashi to Ikebukuro. Ikebukuro is a link between the kind of the countryside and Tokyo. Loads of sketchy shit going on around there. Loads of drugs, loads of uh, prostitution. And the station, oh, fuck that station. It's, it's, it's a mess. I think it's time for me to eat. Look, I got my French cooking book. See, this was good crack last time. Let's open up randomly, see what this bastard is, is cooking up. Salade de betterave au noix. I don't know what that is. Bit of beetroot. Looks fucking delish though. All right, massacre friends. Victoria Rockwell says boobs. Excellent, excellent comments. I salute you, madam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. It's been fun. It's been fun. I haven't done the Johnny Masker show yet. It's 3.24 in the morning. I've got to eat and then I've got to make a fucking show. I fucking love you. This has been so much fun. I love you so much, Massacre Mates. You are incredible. I'm going to just duck out as quickly as I came in. And I'll be seeing you on the next Cheeky live stream. I need a special catchphrase when I when I end the Cheeky live stream, right? I don't want to make it the same as Johnny Massacre show. I do love you. I do love your comments. I do love seeing faces come back. It gives me some kind of continuity in my life. Very much appreciate it. What with me locking myself away, working on the music and the YouTube all the time. All right, suggestions in the comments for outro to the cheeky live stream. I could just make something up, right? C from the C to the H, double E, K, Y. I didn't much like a shirt, didn't like a tie. Something like that. Fill in the blank. Yes, we love you, Victoria Rockwell. Massacre mates, I love you all. This has been a good vibe. Melanie Hyder, Richard getting along. That makes me well happy. That makes me well happy. You two make a good couple.